Hey hacksters! This here is a low-cost FPGA device the size of a microSD card. Signaloid has sent us their C0 microSD module. This FPGA module uses the microSD storage interface, both for loading designs to the FPGA and for interfacing with it. This makes it easy to use the C0 microSD to add an FPGA to your hardware designs if you have an unused microSD slot. It's built around a Lattice ICE 40 FPGA with 128 megabits, so 16 megabytes of additional flash storage and two LEDs, and it's less than a millimeter thick. You can use it in two different modes. In coprocessor mode, running applications on the preloaded RISC-V processor core from Signaloid and communicating with the RISC-V core by reading and writing from the C0 microSD as though it were a standard SD storage device. Or in FPGA SOM mode, as a standalone FPGA system on module or SOM, loading your own custom bit streams onto it and using the microSD contacts as GPIO pins. We'll explore both of these use cases in a minute. Signaloid designed the C0 microSD as a way to get their technology into embedded systems, so they've made it publicly available for repurposing as a piece of hardware. To give you access to additional debugging features, we also have this SD Dev developer kit, an optional compact carrier board and development system, which you can use to connect your Signaloid C0 microSD to your computer as a peripheral. Add a Raspberry Pi compute module, and now you have a compact single board computer with hot swappable FPGA modules. As mentioned before, you can use the C0 microSD to prototype your designs on a breadboard using a microSD breakout. This also works with existing devices that have an onboard microSD slot, like the Adafruit Feather Ada Logger or M5 Stack card pewter. Let's take a tour of the C0 microSD and the SD Dev breakout board, then we'll dive into a couple of quick demos. I'm your host, Alex Glow. Let's dig in. First off, you'll see that the device's components are all mounted on the side opposite the contacts. We can see the Lattice ICE 40 UP5K FPGA, the Flash IC from Renesas, and two onboard LEDs we'll be interfacing with in a minute, a green and a red one. On the opposite side, we have power and ground contacts, plus six GPIO pins that are immediately available to any standard format microSD mount. Six more pins can be accessed easily. Now let's take a quick look at the SD Dev, an optional carrier board that we'll be using as an adapter in our demos. You've got four USB-C ports on this board, one for power and data exchange with a host device, one supplying only power, and two downstream ports. There's a full-sized SD card slot for storage or a Signaloid C0 microSD card in an adapter, a micro HDMI port, and dedicated SPI and I2C connectors accessible via SD slots 0 or 1. On the other side, you've got high-density connectors for the Raspberry Pi Compute Module 4, plus two more microSD slots. This slot can hold a Raspberry Pi OS boot card. This open-topped slot allows you to probe the device's debug pads during development. The board also provides power consumption measurements for the SD peripherals to the compute module via I2C. Let's explore the two modes of operation, as a discrete FPGA system on module, and as a coprocessor assisting your computer or another embedded device. In our first example, we'll demonstrate the FPGA SOM mode, using my computer's SD interface to load custom bit streams onto the device. Once the C0 microSD has a bit stream loaded, when we provide it with power, it will run that application without requiring any other hardware. We'll test this with the Blink and Breathe demos. You can find in-depth info on these and other demos in Evan's Hackster tutorial. I'll start off by recursively cloning the necessary repo for this demo, C0 microSD hardware. Next, I connect the C0 microSD to my computer. Some regular microSD card adapters will work fine for this, but I'm using the SD Dev as the interface, since it's more reliable. In order to load the bitstream, I'll connect to the USB-C power plus data port. When I first connect the device to my computer, it shows up as an unformatted flash storage device. Since I'm on a MacBook, I get an alert that the disk isn't recognizable, but I can just click ignore and continue. Next, I look up the device ID, noting the drive that's about 20.2 megabytes. For this demo, I'll navigate into the directory under Hardware that holds the demo binary provided by Signaloid. I run make with the device ID and enter my admin password to flash the Blink demo, which takes just about a second to complete. Once I power cycle the C0 microSD connecting it to the power port, it runs the demo autonomously. Our second demo adds a breathing animation and physical controls. Once again, I'll connect the SD Dev via the power plus data port for the scope of this video, I'll be using a pre-built binary again, 
dropping it into the examples folder here. After navigating to that directory in the terminal, I run the command to flash this demo. Again, it's super fast. This time I'll unplug the device from the SD dev and insert it into this breadboard adapter, which I've set up with 3.3 volt power and a couple of buttons that connect to GPIO pins on the C0 microSD. Now I can use those buttons to make the breathing faster or slower. Now let's have a look at coprocessor mode. In this mode, we can run applications on the preloaded RISC-V processor core from Signaloid, which allows us to do calculations on values with uncertainties. We use the SD protocol to pass data from a computer to the C0 microSD, which processes the data and passes back the results. This demo application then plots the data for easy analysis. We'll be doing some calculations on probability density, when provided with two values and their tolerances, as we get when using two different components together. For this example, I'll need to reconnect the C0 microSD over power and data, then clone one more GitHub repo and navigate to the Signaloid SOC application directory. After plugging the device back in, I recheck the device ID in case it's changed, then flash the example and switch from bootloader mode to Signaloid SOC mode. The green LED begins blinking to show that the switch has been initiated, until I power cycle it and the green LED goes solid, indicating that the device is in Signaloid SOC mode. I've now flashed the app to the C0 microSD, so it's time to set up the Python host application on my machine. I'll set up my environment first, taking a moment to install some dependencies. Now I'm ready to run some calculations. Quotation marks are important here, due to the parentheses in the values. As you can see, it sends these parameters to the C0 microSD, which thinks for a minute, then sends the results back to be plotted in a beautiful visual graph. Now we'll do the same, but with addition. Success! You can modify this example to send a custom set of measurement samples to the module and return the computed results using that dataset instead. Want to learn more? Check out the fifth update post on Signaloid's crowd supply campaign. The Signaloid C0 microSD is compatible with existing open source toolchains that can target the ICE40 FPGA, such as IceStorm, Yosis, NextPNR, and Ice Studio. They also recently added LaTeX integration, and you can learn more about that on Signaloid's GitHub. Thanks again to Signaloid for sharing this incredible tiny tech. If you love hardware, join Hackster.io to find more Signaloid tutorials and publish your own. Join our contest to win fabulous prizes, and keep up with the latest on Hackster News. Subscribe here for more hardware unboxings, tutorials, and interviews. Hack on!